Egg Trunks is probably a name that you haven't heard in many years, unless of course you're thinking of the Dragon Ball character, but for some reason any rapper that's named after a Dragon Ball character just seems to be the biggest clout chaser in the world. I'm not sure why this has happened in two situations, but it is a trend. Either way though, when hearing his name, you may think of better days, when Members Only was thriving and the Florida wave seemed unstoppable. But what most people know him for these days is clout chasing gone wrong, seeing him as someone who will do anything to be back in the spotlight. I think at this point his sins are pretty well known, but what might be less known is how he got to the point of faking cancer for clout. Yes, I really said that. Interested now? Good. Now without further ado, let's look into the life of Kid Trunks. Real name, Min Nugan. He was originally born in Vietnam and he lived there a short while before immigrating to America at the age of two. Him and his family would land in Broward, Florida, moving back and forth between there and Dorchester for work-related reasons. Eventually, Trunks would land in Florida permanently at the age of six. Trunks' parents would work as nail technicians throughout most of his childhood, working at several different shops. They were hard workers, but their profession just didn't bring very very much income home, which means that Trunks' environment growing up wasn't the best. He grew up in what he describes as the hoods of Broward County, where he became a troubled child often fighting and breaking windows around his local area. He wasn't a gangster or anything, but he was a badass little kid. And because of this, he would often skip school, leading his grades to slip heavily and his parents to become very concerned for him. When Trunks was in high school, he would be bullied heavily, being pushed into lockers, viciously beaten up, and many other incidents that led him to eventually want to drop out. He did just that at the age of 15, dropping out of school to pursue a rap career. This is when he would meet the person who would change his life forever, XXXTentacion. The two of them would meet through a mutual friend named Cynthia. Trunks would often hang out at her house just wasting his life away until the day that she told him he had to get out because she had a new man. Trunks would agree not wanting to start any conflict but he also refused to leave until he could meet this new guy and suss him out because he was afraid for his friend's safety. X would arrive later that day and would scare Trunks with his very presence. However, Trunks pushed through his fear and asked X if he wanted to smoke together. X would decline and continue to be standoffish but Trunks was persistent and would eventually manage to get in X's good graces and get taken under his wing. This is when he would join the rap collective members only and start his rap career. By the end of 2015, Trunks would drop his first ever track titled Burn on SoundCloud. This track wasn't anything special numbers wise, but it was a solid start to his career. As time went on, he continued to hang around X. Some people say that he's a part of members only, some say that he was just a cling on to X, but it depends who you ask. But more on that later. Trunks would go on to appear on members only volume 2 on the track Imposter, getting him a little bit more attention, but at the time, none of the members were really that poppin'. This all changed when X would get locked up and release his track, Look At Me. During the time that X was locked up, Trunks continued working on his own music and performing at parties to keep the lights on. Everything would change though when Look At Me blew up overnight. X would come home and suddenly Trunks was on the revenge tour, getting fucked up on Zans, Lean, Alcohol, and the worst of all, Perks. Trunks had always smoked weed and did a little bit of molly in his childhood, but Perks were what ended up destroying his life. By the time he got off the revenge tour, he was a complete mess, overweight, out of shape, and addicted to pills. It's like Trunks had stepped away from the group for a while and attempts to build his own career up and get his life back on track, eventually getting signed on to Empire Records after X recommended him. They mostly signed him on because they were looking to sign solo members and members only since they already had members only as a group signed on and Trunks really looked the part of a SoundCloud rapper so they thought he was the best one to go with. On account of all the face tattoos he got while under the influence of Xanax, he released his next song Talk on SoundCloud to very little success until two weeks later when X would repost the song and suddenly it blew up, being the first big hit that Trunks really got. He rolled all the success into his big world star hip hop debut, IDK, which serves as his biggest hit to date. He also appeared on Members Only Volume 3 with his song 777, a track he initially made for himself asking X to be a feature on it, but it was later placed on the Members Only tape years after it was recorded. Another big moment for him is when he would hit the media's attention when he would call himself the best Asian rapper alive. Yes, I am the pissing off many of his contemporaries and getting him reposted on DJ Academics page, leading many people who had no idea who he was before this to find him and then become fans of him over time. For most of his career, he was known as the one kid who ran with X, and he was starting to break that label as time went on, but unfortunately when X would pass, he ended up being put in that box even more than he was before. Members Only would all pull together again after X's passing to release one more tape called Members Only Volume 4, the last release underneath the group name. After this, the group would start to split up, leading Trunks to call out Ski Mask for being a clout chaser. Collab with Ski. I made some, I made music with Ski before. Get the fuck out. But like, your favorite rapper switched up on his little brother. To and blocked his little brother. To your favorite rapper switched up on his own partners. To calling his own partners a clout sucking ass nigga when he over here clout sucking or rich the kid and famous decks and shit. Tuh. Ski would then respond saying he was going to slide on trunks at his next show. 
But tell that boy don't run. Tell that boy don't hide. Tell that boy his next show. Tell that boy I'm a slide. Tell that boy when I see him, I'm a piss on him on video. Tell that boy when I see him. These allegations were later pushed back on Trunks after Wi-Fi's funeral would claim he was never actually in members only. The whole situation just seems to be a whole lot of she said, he said, but many people do believe it's actually true that Trunks was never in members only. Right before X's passing, Trunks would drop his Super Saiyan album, which got the project a lot of buzz after X's passing because so many eyes were on the SoundCloud rap genre in general and being a member of members only only helped him out further. After the initial wave of clout started to wear off and without X to help him out anymore, his numbers started to go down and down as the years went on. He attempted to rectify this by appearing on No Jumper, but by that point, people just didn't really care anymore. The unfortunate situation around members only is that a lot of the members just never got that big on their own, and once X was gone, people only ever want to seem to ask them about X. They just end up being tribute X. Even Ski Mask the Slump God himself has fallen into this, and if he can't make it out of that box, then Kid Trunks really has no hope. He even tried to do an IDK Part 2, which actually isn't a bad song, but it didn't really drum up any hype because without X, and the world star hip hop machine behind him and ended up underperforming. This is when Trunks would start to make some absolutely dumbass decisions. In early 2022, Trunks' Instagram page would post a photo of Trunks and X saying, rest in peace to both of them. This started a lot of speculation about what happened to lead to his passing. Not many vlogs would pick up this story, but anybody who saw the initial post would start to comment, rest in peace Trunks, and get the word out that he had passed away. He literally pulled a little Tay one year before she did. Trunks would delete this post soon after and tell the world he wasn't dead, he was just hacked, which really didn't make much sense, but he did have another claim, that he actually had a seizure after starting a perk because he watched the Juice World documentary and decided it was a good idea and ended up getting hospitalized. He got very sick with pneumonia once he was in the hospital, then it was COVID, which led doctors to discover that he had lung cancer. He then started a GoFundMe to raise money for his condition, but ended up deleting it very fast. Maybe his conscience got to him. He eventually walked that claim down to say he only had a cancerous growth in his lung before claiming the very next week he was fully cured, making sure to shout out Fashion Nova men in the comments below. Yes, it turns out that Trunks did all this for a fashion Nova deal. This got a lot of people to call him out online, saying that he was faking his disease. So to draw attention away from the cancer story, he decided to post a picture of himself in the hospital, claiming he was shot in the throat. It turns out that it was just a simple cut that he got when his COVID mask would rip open, exposing the metal inside and scratching his neck. He then proceeded to post fake screenshots of his FaceTime calls he had with other celebrities he had never actually met in his life, like Billie Eilish and Trippie Red, etc. Many YouTubers would start to call Trunks out for faking his story, leading him to react very aggressively, claiming that he was going to sue anyone who talked bad about him online. On top of that, many of his brothers from members only began to disavow him in the comments below, burning multiple bridges that Trunks had spent his whole career building up. Eventually, Trunks had no choice but to come clean, and he blamed his drug addiction for all of it. He would also double down on the claims that he had a cancerous absence, which probably is true, but what's also true is that Trunks only did this because he was a failing rapper. Around the time that I did what I did, I'm not trying to blame or make any excuses up for what I did. What I did was very corny, dumb, stupid, and retarded on my behalf. And I can admit that as a man. But I do want to apologize for what I said about me getting shot. I did not get shot. I had a seizure in the hospital and I had the COVID mask over my face and I was straining myself and the and the you know they have a a metal a metal a metal string in the COVID mask and it popped out and I cut myself in the chin. You know what I wasn't thinking, and not just that I also have a very bad drug addiction. You know what I'm saying, and that leads me to do very impulsive things. You know, my career was going down. Like I feel like I wasn't getting as much love as I used to be, and like you know, me lying about getting shot would work on my behalf which it didn't you know about the cancer shit i have a abscess growing in my chest and in the back of my brain that is cancerous so the one thing I, that i did lie about is having lung cancer. I don't have lung cancer. Watching his star fade each day and with no education or job prospects because his face is covered in face tattoos, he made a desperate move to get the internet talking about him again. Which did work for a time, but after the event passed by, Trunks was left a lot worse off with a destroyed reputation, a smaller fan base than before, and less rappers willing to work with him. For the past years, Trunks hasn't really done much, basically falling off the map doing small time shows for extra money. He also does some live streams, but not even 500 people show up to watch them. 
them, which once again is good numbers, but for somebody who was on his level, he should definitely be doing better than that. The last time he was seen was in a HyperTalk TV interview taking place after one of his shows. He would speak on the underground and he looked to be in pretty good spirits. And yes, I will put your channel link in the bio below. And at the end of all of this, do I really blame him? Well, yes and no. Faking a shooting when your best friend died from that same situation a few years earlier is extremely disrespectful and no sane person would do that. But I do understand his plight somewhat. The world changed around him and his style of rap just fell out of style. He became desperate and he made some really bad choices. And I do think these choices are really fucked up, but I don't think they should follow him for the rest of his career. At this point, the advice I would give him is just double down, just play the villain role because I feel like that's all you can really do at this point. Why not join the super group that I'm making with Kid Boo, Baby Goth, and all the rest of the fallen off rappers? Oh, but for real, I'm leaving the line open. Kid Trunks, if you want to do an interview and speak on your side of the story, I'm glad to host it. And if that goes for any other rapper who wants to do the same thing, I'm not just here to like slander you guys and just tell one side of the story if you have other facts about the story then i'm more than welcome to host you and you can give your side because remember at the end of the day no matter how goofy these people are they are still people so don't fuck with them don't harass them da 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 unless there's somebody like vm don't harass them but like we can just make fun of them because he's just a complete freak them kid textures they're in a different league but anyways for now guys i'll leave it at that clout is a hell of a drug don't indulge in it or it will destroy you so shout out knife gang leave a knife emoji in the comments below if you watched all the way to the end i've been forgetting to say that in the last few videos but i definitely got to bring that back follow me on instagram join my discord server and most of all thank you guys so much for watching talk to you next time bye